Ladies and gentlemen, this is PJ Kavaya, the voice of State Wars Hockey, and you are watching the SWH podcast brought to you by Glass Half Full Productions. Thank you to all of our amazing sponsors, Mission Bauer, Tour, Alkali, Labeta, Rink Rat, Conix, Warrior, Monkey Sports, Yord Watches, Car Shield, Rocket Puck, Wraparound, and Top Shelf Targets. We look forward to seeing you all on the rink soon. Hey, this is Tim McManus, SWH podcast number 24, joined by the very handsome Greg Thompson, all the way from uh, Long Island, New York, here with you guys today on this beautiful Thursday. What's going on, GT? Timmy, what's up? Nothing much here, just, uh, you know, playing a little more hockey these days, uh, watching a little Stanley Cup action. Missed last night's game, unfortunately. But uh, other than that, just kind of, you know, grinding it out over here. What's going on with you? Yeah, same thing, really. Just uh, another day in paradise, you know. Um, got to watch a little bit of Stanley Cup last night. Really, really loving this NHL playoffs. It's going to be sad to see it end. I guess the only good thing is supposedly the season is going to start like a week later. Um, so it's uh, it's been great. Um, this is lightning, boy. When they're clicking on all cylinders, I don't think anybody can touch them. You know, if you take everybody's A game in the league and they're on, I don't know how you beat that team. Yeah, they have they have some uh, some weapons, man. I mean, their offensive ability is just crazy. And then they have guys like Point and, uh, you know, Stamco's coming to the lineup last night. They're just firing from all cylinders. And their D, you know, we always, you know, we're, we're critics on Shattenkirk. And uh, I know you love McDonough. You know, that he's been playing a lot of minutes and some great hockey. But, uh, you know, once you get past the offense, defensive, offensive uh, forwards, then you got to get past the defensemen and then their goalie. So, um, you know, Shat- Vasilevsky might be the best goal in the league on top of it. Shattenkirk, you know, he's not, we always talk about this. He's not the strongest defenseman, but he's really good offensive defenseman. Uh-huh. Uh, so he brings a lot to the table. But, you know, they play a lot of minutes, those guys. So they're bound to make a couple of mistakes. You know, which uh, you know we'll talk about later today with with the podcast um, and, and the game. But um, yeah, you know, you play so many minutes, you know, you, you're getting worn down in the corners, and you know, you're gonna you're bound to make a couple mistakes here and there. But uh, you know, overall, I think Shattenkirk's playing some pretty good hockey. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, I uh, as you know, I, I can be a little critical of him, but um, he's playing great. I mean, Victor Hedman to me has proven hands down best defenseman in the league, you know, in big games. Um, he's been unreal. I'm a big 77 fan now. I might change my number to 77. Uh, he's – All coffee. Yeah, he, he's so good. And then when him, Kucherov, and Point are on the ice together, I don't know if you need two more players. <laughs> They're just dynamite together. And um, it's it's pretty incredible to watch. Yeah. Looking forward to tomorrow night. And then I, I'm guessing they – I think they play doubleheader, right, Friday then Saturday. Is that what it is? I think they play two nights in a row. So yeah, if it comes to that, well, it's it's two one, Tim. Is that what it's two? Oh, there's three one now. Uh, it's two one. Uh, uh, but they went up two one last game, right? And now they're up three one. Uh, Tampa was losing one nothing in the series, and they won the last. Oh, uh, okay. So two one. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, I don't think they're losing again. Um. Yeah. You know, Kucherov. His passing ability is unreal. Yeah. Sees the ice like no one other. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're a team to beat. You know, our buddy Pat Maroon's on the team, you know. I mean, obviously, he's not, you know, a name that stands out to, you know, to us he does. But to the average person, I don't think you think of Pat Maroon, he's all about Kucherov and better and all these guys. But, obviously, it's great seeing him out there. You know, when Stamco scored that first goal, you know, Pat was out there with him going hard to the net, which we'll talk about later how much that affects the goaltender thinking about that guy going to the net on the other side. And then opened up a stamp coast to roof one where yeah. Pat's not going hard to the net. Maybe they're just keying on stamp coast to goaltender and he doesn't score. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but Pat's right there to catch him behind the net, which is pretty awesome to see. Pat's always in the middle of everything, Tim, you know, whether it be uh, chirping, you know, from the bench or just, you know, he, he, you tell he's out there. He brings a presence to each team he's on. Um, you know, even if he's not scoring goals, he's banging or chipping away and wearing down their defense. You know, he, he, he makes a point point out there, you know, and uh, he's, he's playing some pretty good hockey. Yeah, well, Fredo Leon, our uh, 
a roll hockey's version of John Cooper from down in Florida. Uh, he just said, yeah, two one Friday and Saturday. So he's online. So hello to Wilfredo, our buddy, uh, Florida cup uh, guy down in Florida, doing some good things down in Florida. Um, which is great to see. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, but you know, then again, on the flip side, you think of the Dallas stars, I feel like everyone's discounted them every round. Yeah. And I, I picked again, I picked, I think Colorado playing them. I picked Vegas for sure against them. Like every round, they feel like we look past them and they've won and then they won game one in this series. So, you know, again, I'm still going lightning all the way. Um, but stars are pretty damn good. You don't get there if you're not a good player. I, a good I love that Dallas team. I love them for a couple of years now. Um, you know, Klimberg, Heskinen, um, Hints and, all these guys, it's incredible. And then you have the veterans, Pawlowski and Cole Perry, uh, Jamie Ben, uh, Sagan. I mean, it's a deadly lineup, Tim. You know, uh, Ben's a great captain, isn't he? You can just tell. Yeah. yeah. He bangs, he fights, he'll score. He, he just does everything, you know. Like he's just that ultimate. Mark Messier. What's that? He's like a modern-day Mark Messier. Yeah, he is. Like, he does everything out there. Um, so it's great to see. But, uh, yeah, it's a – most importantly, it's always fun when you're watching hockey and you don't care who wins because, you know, with the Rangers not in there, I could care less. Yeah. And uh, it's just fun to watch good hockey, and the hockey's been incredible. So uh, hope yeah. people out there watch on the Stanley Cup. And I'm hoping maybe hockey's gaining a lot of new fans. But, you know, it stinks that it's on, you know, not on the network every time. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm hoping non-hockey fans are checking out these games because, you know, hockey could definitely uh, pick up a lot of new fans just from watching this. I mean, I'd much rather watch this than the NBA, the NFL, or Major League Baseball. I think hockey is just so much more exciting. Um, and uh, I'm loving the playoff hockey is the best. So, Yeah, don't get me started on the NBA. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's always been – it's not as exciting to me. I guess if you're really into it, it is. But to me, it's always – I don't know. It's about one or two players on every team every time. It's, uh, you know, that you kind know, of thing. You usually know. I mean, I've been watching an NBA game in a long time. And, you know, I usually know the top four teams before the season even starts. You know, I know this yeah. year there's some update, uh, some upsets, whatever. But still, I mean, usually you, you know the, the top teams going in. But I wanted to go back to um, – I know, I know you brought up John Cooper. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but John Cooper was an assistant coach of the Team USA inline hockey team. Um, Years ago, I think it was might have been 2006, 2007, that time frame, right. um, when they won in, I think it was Slovakia. Um, mm -hmm. He was an assistant coach there with uh, Darren Turcott, who uh, was an ex-New York Ranger. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he, you know, he, he's been at all levels, you know, roller hockey, ice hockey, juniors. We went to college at Hofstra here in uh, Long Island, right? Yeah, so across there. Um, and he's got a law degree. But, that's uh, why when when I first got asked to be the assistant coach for IIHF uh, USA team, that's what I would tell friends of mine who aren't really in the know. I'm like, hey, I'm doing a job that John Cooper, the Lightning head coach, did a few years ago, and then yeah. then I became the head coach, which he never got to even do that. So that's I got one up on Coop on that one. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, obviously he's a great coach. He's done it at every level, and you know, and him Pat Maroon have a history. You know, he technically coached them, you know, in his younger years or whatnot, and juniors or whatnot. So um, there's that connection there, which is nice. So. Um, you know, great to see. And Mike Tillotson's on board. He said, saying hello. So what's up, Till? You know, Mike. see you, buddy. Hope all's well in Missouri. And uh, yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about what we're, what we're starting to do today, Greg. So, you know, we had an idea a few weeks ago. You know, one of my passions with coaching is, um, is video work. And um, when, when Joe Cook had asked me to be his assistant coach with Team USA in Slovakia in 2016, you know, the team had finished in fifth place the year before. And we had a, a fifth seed ranking going in. So I had asked Joe to get me copies of all the games from the year before um, at Worlds, just to look at them and dissect them because no one had really done that yet with the US team. So I got all the games. And as you know, Greg, you were working with me here. I went through every game, wrote down every face off and how I even did minutes of how long it took after every draw to get the puck back and how much time you ate up by winning a draw and all these things. And I definitely found a lot of great trends doing the video work. And I know obviously guys at the pro level do this daily, um, which is awesome. So I always loved doing that. And then in Barcelona two years ago, we did the same thing, right? You know, yeah. when we lost to the Czechs. We went back and, and World Skate had some great video online of every game. We went back and we looked at every goal that we gave up and we were able to figure out mistakes we made. And they were, again, habits we had. And we were able to sit down with, I still remember sitting in the locker room with Travis Snow and Junior Cadiz after practice going over something and 
and all the guys and we made some corrections and we wound up obviously beating them the second time around. And I attest a lot of that to doing the, the leg work on the video work and just players today, whether they're pros or seven year olds, it's a visual world now, Greg, you know, it's not like when I was a kid where coaches just yapped to you and you got to figure it out. Now teachers are on their smart board, you know, kids are on their iPads all the time and they're, and they're playing games and watching video and everything is visual now. And I know as a coach with coaching ice hockey with kids, they need to see stuff, you know? Um, so showing that video is a great tool. So we have all the Palma pro games and I actually sent a link to all of them to all the coaches. And that's kind of a gift we give every year to the Palma pro coaches to be able to go back and watch. But what we're going to be doing weekly now is Greg and I are going to grab a game of a week and we're going to dissect the game. And we did it this week with uh, a round robin, first round robin game between the Connix Pure and the Tour Roadrunners. And we're going to break down the game and we're going to really dive in there. We're going to break down mistakes from players, uh, mistakes from referees, mistakes from the announcers, coaches, and great plays they all make and calls. So, um, you know, got to have a little bit, you know, everyone, I know everyone's got thin skin when it comes to anything being said about them, but we're breaking it down on video. So it's nothing personal. Trust me. All this is a learning tool, whether you guys that are involved in the game want to treat it as such, that's fine. But more importantly to the young players watching, I want them to see this stuff and maybe some coaches out there that are always asking us for advice on how they could get better or make their teams better. Um, this is a great tool, I think, to uh, see things going on the ice slow down a little bit and maybe if they did something differently, get a better result from it. It's funny you say, um, you know, you mentioned the visual stuff thing. You know, during the playoffs, during the, during the season, you could see players sitting on the bench, you know, looking at the iPads, looking at, you know, the plays previous to, you know, maybe what they should adjust on or maybe a power play or maybe even a breakout. Um, so that's that's pretty cool to see now in the NHL. You know, you see the uh, the uh, pot, the uh, iPads on the benches, which is pretty cool. Well, one thing I've learned about kids today, Greg, and having three of my own and now coaching school hockey. You know, I coached varsity two years ago, and then last year I coached the middle school team, which is not high in hockey like AAA ice or anything that I don't have time to do with my own job and kids that aren't playing hockey. But the one thing I noticed. And this is an old sport. I had this discussion at a soccer game last night. Kids today don't watch sports. Okay. Kids today don't sit down and watch the entire playoff game last night, Stanley Cup game. They go on their phone. They want to see the highlight goal. They want to see the celly. Um, but to sit down and watch a complete game, very few do. And I realized that when I coached varsity two years ago, I would go in the locker room every game and our team sucked. We finished the season two and 15. And after every practice, I would come in the locker room or before the practice and ask the team, hey, who watched the game this week? Raise your hand. And they were all Islander Ranger fans. And maybe one kid a week would raise his hand. And that just told me something. These kids don't watch hockey. They don't watch soccer. They don't watch baseball. And when you don't watch, you don't learn properly because you don't see how plays develop. When you just watch a highlight video, yeah, you see the end result. And of course, kids are great at celebrating now. They, they've watched Ovechkin and McDavid, all these guys jump into the glass and, and, you know, swish the ice after they score. They're great at all that. But they haven't learned the finer arts of the game because they don't watch it. They don't see how a play develops, what causes it. And the parents are guilty of it too. That's why a kid can make a great play in the defensive zone that caused to go the other way. And everyone's always cheering for the last guy to put the puck in the net where that kid on D made the whole play happen. And you know, as a defenseman, how that goes. You know, yeah. it's kind of a, a lost thing sometimes, unfortunately. But how plays develop is so important because every play affects another and it's not always the end result, you know. So I think watching these videos and things we're going to be doing, whether people want to watch it or not, is up to them. Or maybe we're just going to entertain ourselves today, Greg. But um, it's been fun watching it because I'm constantly learning. I think you're constantly learning. And just watching this one game, you see so many things, even from some really talented players that if they just tweak things and – my worry from all this is we're going to make all these teams better and our sniper team is going to be in more trouble next year if players actually watch this because there's things that are so fixable. And especially in roller hockey, where we don't have a lot of time to practice, really. You know, a Team USA, we're practicing when we're there, but what pro team is practicing? Like, you really can't. And a lot of the youth teams nowadays don't either because whether well, kids are playing too much other sports or they live far away. So there's not a lot of practice goes on. So this kind of stuff is so important because there's so many things that, if you just tweak a little bit and they made a little bit different play, 
that one goal swing, as you know, especially in the Palma Pro Division, could be the difference of a win or a loss. Totally. I agree there. Yeah, you know, when I was growing up going to tournaments and stuff like that, you know, obviously I loved being around the rink. You know, if I had an early game, you know, bright and early, I'd say, Mom, give me a 20. I'm staying for the day. And I, I, would, I would actually sit down and watch games, you know, um, you know, where others, you know, who kind of hang around, they would, you know, play around or skate around the rink or whatever. I always call myself watching the games. And I think that's what made me better as a player, um, you know, throughout the ranks. But um, I, I always enjoyed just watching the older guys and playing with the older players and just picking up on, on better habits. And uh, I think that's huge. And I don't see too, too many kids doing that these days, especially during the tournaments, you know, usually they'll play their game and then just run out to ice hockey or, um, you know, another sport. But um, I, I just think it's really important to watch games. Yeah, but Greg, but, but you just said it's so important because that's an example of when I think of you as a player and I've had you as a player for too many years now, um, mm -hmm. you were always obviously skilled, but what separated you from everyone else is everyone's got skill, but then you had the most important skill which was your brain and yeah. you understood the game and you're smarter than most. Same thing with the CJ Yoda while he's still playing at the level he's playing at. He can't skate like he used to, he can't handle a puck like he used to, but he's got this. And that again comes from being a student of the game and you watched games. There are kids today that don't even watch the game when they're playing in it. They go on the bench and they're talking to their buddy. They're fixing their, they're looking in the crowd. They're not even watching what's going on out there, which again is a, uh, is terrible because you got to see what's going on within the game what the refs are calling, what, how that D's playing, who their weaknesses are, um, what, what the goalie's weaknesses are, all these things you, you see when you're watching. And I think, again, kids today are missing out on a lot of that. And uh, hopefully that can be corrected. And I think it will make for better hockey players and most importantly, smarter hockey players. I think we all know, especially in the game of roller hockey, brains is probably the most important tool of all. And I would argue in every sport it is. So um, yeah. that's kind of what we want to accomplish here with the Palma pro playback. So um, I'm excited for it. And uh, I think everybody else is. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to doing this weekly. Um, I can't wait to break down my game um, and uh, you know, our team's game as well, you know, in the upcoming weeks should be interesting. Um, you know, I, I watched a couple of the games so far, but uh, didn't really kind of, you know, break it down yet, you know, um, right. It's going to be pretty cool to watch and, and break down, and uh, I'm excited for it. And we're going to get started here in a second. Hold on. Here's, here's a little word from one of our buddies. Hey, this is Laura Mejeranta, world champion from Team USA. Well, actually, five-time world champ, if anyone is counting. You are listening to the SWH Podcast. All right. Thank you, Laura. That's hey, Laura this from Team USA, five-time champion, as she said. All the way from California. Can't wait to see her soon. Um, always a pleasure. Um, and here we are back at SWH Podcast, Palma Pro Playback. We're going to bring up here now the Tour Road Runners versus Conix Pure we're Round Robin game. To Car Shield. Okay. And uh, we're going to start here. We're going to share a screen here. And, and GT and I are going to go through kind of like a coach's corner here. We're going to break down some plays. Took a lot of notes over the last week here. Keeps us busy. Keeps us on a paycheck while we do this. While no tournaments are really going on. And uh, thank you for everybody checking in today. Um, we're excited to be here with you guys. So uh, I'm going to share a screen here now. And uh, we'll let Trusty and the guys you, jump I in here. George Brown. Expect from either one of these teams. If I'm looking at it right now, Treft, I'm saying to me, this is a roadrunner road runner win. They should be the favorite here. If there was an over-under. <clears throat> so right away there, George Brown with a big prediction, um, GT, right away. He had Roadrunners winning this first game. And just like in Palma Pro, you never know who's going to win these round robin games. So we'll see at the end of this, for those who don't know, if George Brown was correct there or not. But we're going to forward here, Greg, to a point of the game. I know we had talked about, and we'll get started here with a little play here. So, Greg, you're going to jump in here with a play. All right, we'll let it play first, and then we'll go back. Wearing Midwestern guys. Kevin Dwyer not between the pipes for Connix, which is a big loss for them. But it's not like they have a fall off here, though. All right, GT, so there's a play there. We're going we're gonna to rewind it here real quick. And, and it's funny, the announcers missed this, and the referee, obviously, uh, which was an obvious 
pick, I think, coming out of the zone, which set everything up for them. But I want you to break this down here for everybody. Yeah. California and so We'll start with the penalty, um, which is coming up in a second here. You know, Connick slows the game down, breaks out. Decent little breakout here. But there's a pick right there, which I would have called an interference. Um, I, I think that was an easy one. But, uh, you know, refs are, uh, are human. But they're wearing, um, tries to move a puck down low, looks like to Aldridge, which I think he should have made the pass over um, to 67 there for maybe a little one-timer because both D look like they're in that passing passing lane and that guy's wide open on the left side here. So, I, you know, personally, I think they're wearing, probably should have moved over to the left side um, and it would have been an easy shot on net. But he does get the puck over and um, – Tim, is that is that Aldridge down there? I, I can't tell. Yeah, it looks like well, it looks like it's okay. It looks like it might be. Um, but what I what I see here too, Greg, just on my end is, um, you know, a couple things. You know, one, when you have a three on two, we train really early on. The most important thing is one of the wingers have to go where to the net to the net, right? So without someone going hard to the net, and and it's harder with this angle here, this camera angle to really see. And I don't think we get a better camera angle of it. But the D were able to play it easily where if one of these guys is going hard to the net and I would like to see if this is all, whoever this is going hard to the net, it would drag a D and then it would open up him even more. Mm -hmm. And on this side, I would have liked to have seen this man get a little wider for his, uh, for his teammate there. Um, and I think that could have helped him a little bit, give a little bit better of a, of an option here. So let's watch it again in fast spo speed here. Who's coming down. Makes that head man. And then they almost like, it was like they were going to crisscross and then they didn't, Greg, there, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But if 67 gets wide there, I think, and he goes hard to the net, they can maybe, and I know you got a back checker there, but I think it may open up this three on two a little better because they don't even get a shot on goal, I don't believe, out of it. Nope. You know, it's kind of like that. So, yeah, just a little something on a three on two, you know, um, right there. And if you're, you're getting that puck towards the net, maybe put it on the pads and hit that trailer, you know, coming in for a rebound. Um, but that's got to be a shot on net. 100%. So now we're going to we'll fast forward here a little bit. And, and, and one thing, anyone that's played for or with myself or GT knows that the word that we use probably 8,000 times a tournament is the word face-off. And I think face-offs are something, Greg, that most teams, whether even at the Palma Pro level or at the six and under level, need to talk more about, and they don't. And, you know, this face-off here, it, it's kind of a weird scenario, and I'll let you talk about it. Um, the setup's kind of awkward on both sides. I'm not sure what they're looking to do either on either way, but it worked out for the Roadrunners, and we'll play it all through, and we'll see here because actually they wind up scoring a goal down the other way, which never should happen off a defensive end zone for Connix. Um, But let, let's, let's, let's fast forward through, and then we'll come back to it. Okay. Very good, Keith Johnson. And as you said, all the goalies in this pro division are great, but he was a big part of their success last year in Palma Pro. See if he can do it again this year. Remember, he got hurt in that Palma game yeah. too. That didn't help. Now here's Joey DiMartino, left wing side. He shoots and scores. That's an early goal, and that's a goal he'd probably like to have. So that was the goal there, Joey D coming down. And we're going to break this down a little bit back from the faceoff, Greg. Um, I'm going to let you chime in here. Yeah, so for me personally on, on the draws, um, you know, there's got to be three guys up, you know, for in, um, you know, if, you, if you're Connix, you know, I know he's a righty taking a draw there and it, he's, he's looking to go to his backhand to the D, but I personally think, you know, 27 there has to move up all the way up to the, the line, you know, um, and I think the Roadrunners guy, um, I, I think it's a cost. Oh, here, here, Greg, you're talking here. Yeah. You'd like to see him up here, right? Yeah, up there. Just just so he can win that battle, the loose puck goes to that corner, that side, that sideboard, the half wall. And I think that's Acosta there. Um, I I always – this is one of my pet peeves. I, I think the D-man should go to the same side um, on that – to the left of the, the centerman. Got to take him, him here. He's got to go there. Right. Um, you know, luckily, Martini's very good on the draws, and I, I don't know if it's a set play or not, but – Either he has to 
he has to go to the side or move back a little more because if the puck gets one back, it might come too fast because he's pretty close to him there, right? right. So the four check, you know, is a lot easier that way. But I also think he should be up, up near that line there. Yeah, especially Greg, because we got to assume there's a good chance the puck may trickle to this area. Exactly. And now it's going to be a foot battle. Who's going to get there? Exactly. Um, and if you're on the defensive side, you got to think defensively, right? So you want to make sure you're the one getting that puck. Exactly. So acosta has got to move up, move up, move up there. Um, because if a puck's one back, he should win that battle to the corner if a puck's one to the corner. Okay. Right. Like you said, there might be a set play there. I'm not too sure. But if Costa's up there, you know, to the left of Martini taking the draw, he can win that 50-50 puck easily, you know, if a, if a puck goes there. Um, right, and Greg, the other thing to think about too there, though, is if 13 here, and mm -hmm. I'm not using names right now because I the roster in front, I don't want to miss anyone's name wrong, but if he wins the draw cleanly back here. Parker Elliott, yeah. Okay? If he gets his puck, mm -hmm. look how far Acosta is now to have to get to him. Exactly, yeah. He's Because he's going to get tied up at center here. These guys are going to tie up. Yep. This puck was one clean. He may have him. He's but if he's smart, he's gonna walk that puck here, mm -hmm. and he's not getting to him through screens. You have a great scoring chance. Exactly. Right. And in your defensive zone, you got to think we could lose this draw. Exactly. So Acosta's got to move up um, there, and you know, hopefully win that fifty-fifty battle, which he should. And then he'll win that puck battle if it's won all the way back into the zone because he's the first guy there. Um, right. So you know, he should probably be moving up there. And let's talk about the other side here too, Greg. Yeah, so let's touch on that too, Tim. Um, so, yeah, it looks like Brett Jackson's lined up, you know, in the center there, in the middle. And Joey DiMartino's closer to the goal, which I think he's in no man's land there. I'm not sure what he's doing there. But Joey D should probably be the inside guy, you know. And, and then Brett, Brett should be and then Brett should be coming out here. Brett should be going out there to the point. On this play here, who's going out to the point? Because no obviously Brett's trying to help Martini out in the draw here. The other Connix player is trying to get in there to win the draw and help out. And he's on his guy. There's no one shooting out to either point then. Right. So Roadrunners really got lucky on this draw here. You know, th thankfully Martini's very good on them. But um, I think they, they need a better play, better, uh, you know, better play going into the draw. Yeah, and, and, you know, talking about this, um, you know, you make a good point because too many times, and I heard a, a funny line about this the other day, actually, too many times we look at the result and not of what led to the result. And because the result was good, we forget about it. You know, here the Roadrunners wind up scoring on this, which is kudos to the Roadrunners. You know, they made an unbelievable play out of this. Yeah. You know, they're in their zone. They're not really set up great for the space off. Martini's a stud on draws, so that was a big part of it. But the result is a goal, so you don't even think about, hey, maybe we got lucky there. You yeah. know, and, and, the, and the funny thing I heard the other day, I heard Colin Coward say this the other day on a sports show, and he said, you know, if my three-year-old daughter runs across the street and doesn't get hit by a car and gets to the other side, I don't say, hey, good job, honey. We say, whoa, we got lucky. Like, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, and you talk about it. And it's kind of the same thing here. And, and we'll roll through one last time here. So they win the draw. He was a big part of their success last year in Palma Pro. And I'm going to jump in here, Greg, a little bit on what happens here now. Yeah. I remember he got hurt in that Palma game, yeah. too. So now this right here is Joey DiMartino, right? So everyone that knows Joey knows that he's obviously a stud. He's our go-to guy, He's right? A skater. Yeah. So this head man is coming here. Everyone's kind of marked. Now, Tui here, I get it why he's back. You know, you don't want to get beat. But he's given a lot of room here, and he's very slow to come over to Joey when the puck gets passed. I, and I'm just assuming he's worried about Joey's speed, which, hey, I would be too. But he gives him so much time and space. Joey throws one on net. And I think it was Martini going hard to the net causes confusion. Like we talked about earlier with the Stamkos goal, Pat Maroon, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll roll it through here. But then you see the goal scored, and it's it's kind of because of that. Because Tui's still here. See how far away he is, Greg? And yeah, he's, he's coasting, you know? 
Martini's going hard tonight, and Joey's smart. He throws a puck to the net. Left wing side, he shoots and scores. That's an early goal, and that's a goal. And that goal, and that goal, Greg, is 100% because Martini went to the net there. Yeah, he made a great play, caused some chaos down there. And I don't think it was an interference. I think the puck went in before. Um, You know, there was a little chaos down in the crease, but um, it was a great play by Martini. 100%. 100%. All right, we're going to fast forward here um, to another play here, and I'll let it roll here. Not the, not the Avalanche game, of course, but. Sabres game is on at what time? <laughs> October? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Or December, I should Probably say. Probably November, yeah. Here comes Newens. Left wing side, stutter step, shoots, it's blocked, comes back to him. Power move to the front of the net, Johnson oh. on the rebound, says no. What a stop by Keith Johnson. All right, Greg, I'm going to let you jump in here a little bit on this back check play on the, by the Roadrunners. Um, and Keith Johnson, like he does so well, to me, he's one of the most underrated goalies in the sport, makes a huge early save. And early in this game, he made a bunch of them. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this play here, um, and I'll let you talk through it as, it as it rolls. Yeah. First was a great breakout by the Roadrunners, using their speed, going to the outside. Um, right here, I think Martini – I mean, I'm sorry, that was Nick Berger – He's got to go a little further to the right side. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to read the play when someone's coming so, so fast into the play, especially cutting across the rink like that. But he kind of has to read where Joey's going there, um, you know, and maybe give him an option on that back door on that far side. But he made – more uh, Berger made a great play on the back check here. Heads up on the back check. Let's, let's play it. Okay. So he, he makes that back check and then gets in the play, but then he kind of loses where his man is and the rebound kind of pops out. Great back check there. So they're okay right now. They're okay. And they, Newens, to his credit, makes – he just keeps battling here and gets through somehow, right? He does. yep. Martini either has to commit to his man there or maybe put his stick down in the defensive uh, lane. So seven doesn't get that puck there. Um, but he kind of just, I don't know if he lost the rebound, if he thought the rebound was going wide or, or what he was doing, but he's got to go to that man and tie up a stick because, you know, there was a couple loose pucks there. Especially and, Kyle Oldrich, who's arguably their best goal scorer, right? Yeah. He's Onyx coming in late here. For sure. And then, and then you got, uh, you know, Shane Bennett here. Um, excuse me, uh, Blake Bennett, I believe. No, who is it? Uh yeah, Blake Bennett, who I get these Bennett's confused all the time. I love them both so much. Um, but, you know, he comes in here, number 91, Blake Bennett. Homie, he, as you know, I've said on past podcasts, I'm a huge fan of. Um, um, my eyes are open to the Bennett brothers. He comes in a little lazy here, too, and is just standing around as well. And, and again, if it wasn't for Keith Johnson, this is a, a goal here really quick for Connix. Because you see it here, puck comes out. You can see it rolling a little bit there. And Berg is going to the net. And... Bennett's just standing behind there. And the other word that we're going to use a hundred times this whole week, Greg, besides face off is puck focused. And again, that's kind of what happens here, right? Everyone's watching the puck carrier, looking at the puck yep. and Keith Johnson makes a great save. Great save. Yeah. So I like to see Berger kind of commit to a man there um, and not get too uh, puck focused. Great back check. 100%. All right, so we're going to keep moving along here now. I'll let GT jump in here. Two. I do, too. I think they, they would have been a strong team. I mean, not to say would have been because they're, they're here now, but yeah. if they would have played, yes, they would have, they would have been right there in the thick of things. <clears throat> do I think we still would have had the same – Bella Morte, nice move around the back of the net, and they'll fire it into his own zone. Do I think we would have still had the same two teams in the championship? Yes. Probably, yeah. DiMartino. I think I'm going to rewind back a little bit here, Greg. To. Yeah, right there. Okay. But 18 minute period, you can make it happen. Purcell tries to power to the front of the net. That one not working. Luke Corso and Purcell come together behind the net, two big bodies. And Purcell wins that and fires it back into his own zone. Tanner Tui. 
He'll feed Kyle Mooney. Try to. Yeah, we talked about this play earlier, Greg. Do you remember this one now? Yep. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, so Ed Olchek always says a, a famous line when he does the NHL games about live to fight another day, you know, and, and not to try to make something out of nothing. And and here's an example of that. You know, Connick has pure control of the puck. And And then they come in, and as you can see here, when you when you watch it, that you know, the roadrunners have all four guys back here. Okay. So coming through with the puck, you really have nothing going on. And, and what I would like to see here is, you know, you could make a drop pass to your man coming in late, you know, which I'm not a big fan of blind drop passes and stuff. But what I would love to see, and this is what you'll see in ice hockey a lot, is Connix to be on the same page where he knows that he can rim that puck around the boards. And then the man on the far boards right here. Oh, sorry. The man on the far boards here, he can get to the boards, okay, mm -hmm. right here, and get to the board. So you run that puck around the boards. He controls it now. The road runners are all coming this way anyway, and you're going to gain control of that puck and keep it, as opposed to what happens here is it's just kind of a thrown pass, a hope pass. Kyle Mooney. And now the road runners have it again. Slot. And it's and not a huge it. play in the game, obviously. But as we know, it's all about Rangers puck control, right, Greg? Colorado. Exactly, yeah. You just don't want to give the puck to the other team. Yeah, they now get the road runners, off. you know, go to work, right? Yeah, exactly. Here comes Delamorte, long range shot, and the Lindenwood line. So great shot by Delamorte there, which came off that. They go the other way, and again, wasn't a great save by Robinson there. It's a goal. Yep, totally. I like that that uh, shot through the screen by Delamorte. Oh, great shot! Delamorte is really becoming a great player. Yeah, um, you know, playing at Lindenwood now, playing more, being on the ice uh, five days a week, as you know, when you went there, it just makes you a better player. Um, all right, we're gonna fast forward to play for you, you here, Greg. Be Martino, up to center. Nice job by Delamorte. He's got like eight guys on him. He got away from. He was him. looking to go back door. He almost had his man there. Waring to the right wing side. Alex McDonald into the zone. AMAC tried to send a cross rink. It's blocked. Yeah. Christian Acosta gets bottled up. And they're going to be on the two on one here. Nick Martini, right wing side. He's looking. Saucer pass towards the front of the net. Nice. Yeah, so that play started. Um, you know, there was an odd man, not an odd man rush, but an odd, a, break, a break for Connix. And I thought Joey DiMartino made a great play at angling his man. Um, you know, just, just realizing, cl closing the time and space the guy coming down and just just closing space up and angling that defense that forward in a perfect direction and uh you know cause cause a turnover and uh roadrunners ended up getting a two-on-one ultimately out of the play here so watch Joey DiMartino here realizing you know who's coming down and uh and, and where he is on the rink wing side Alex. and that's the play right there you were talking about Joey D yeah Made a great defensive play, just closing gap. It's great seeing a young guy like Joey D could play. He's a great defensive player as well, not just a, an offensive player, right? Yeah, totally. And he's got that long stick, long reach, which is really deceiving for a smaller guy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, his, his stick works deadly. And, you know, and Alex McDonald here, after he got knocked off the puck, to his credit, he makes a great play to turn around, doesn't give up on it, back check, steals it back. But then they get a little confused with themselves and they throw a puck where a big body like Alex like to see him eat the puck a little bit. Yeah. Throws it and then causes the odd man break the other way, right? So Come watch it here. AMAC tried to send a cross rink. It's blocked. So great back it's check here. Costa. It's But then we just throw it, little miss, you know. Miss and now it's a two on one, right, Greg? Yeah. I know we talked about this early. Um, a lost art, I think, is shooting for rebounds, Greg. You know, yeah. everyone wants to score. Or if they don't have a shot to score, they just don't shoot. And here's an example of, you know, Connick, which is a very good defensive team. You know, they play this two-on-one perfectly. Um, and I think it looks like it's Matt Swanson back here, number nine. And Martini, instead of just throwing one on the far pad for a, a, a rebound chance, just tries to make a pass that's never going to get through, and they get nothing out of this two-on-one. So let's watch it here. Nick Martini, right wing side. He's looking. Saucer pass towards the front of the net. Nice block. block. And it just gets blocked. 
Yes. Yeah, one thing as I watch this, Greg, it drives me nuts. So our camera crew, they, they change the angles. They, they, they overdo it, right? So we yeah. got to talk to them next year about this now. Because, you know, these camera guys are not hockey guys. Mm-hmm. So they're not understanding that we're watching a play develop and then suddenly the camera flips and he gets really close in and it makes it harder to watch it. Um, so I understand why they're doing it, but they have to understand the game a little bit better. Exactly, yeah. I agree there. But, no, uh, Swanson made a great play, um, you know, on the two-on-one blocking it. And, uh, yeah, Martini could have thrown it towards the net for a rebound. Um, or, the, or that guy on the far side could have trailed a little, a little more for a two-on-one. Right. All right, let's look here at, at, a, at a great forecheck here by Connix, which causes a turnover by the roadrunner. It's trying to do a little too much, trying to be a little too fancy. Maybe stuff they get, they get away with a little more in junior and juggernaut or whatever because they just dance a lot of guys. And, and Connix makes a great play here. Um, and uh, draws a power play. Let's watch it. 34 games for Quad City and the SP. Also had five games played for Kansas City in ECHL. It's Blake Bennett. It was at American International College last year. 60 points in 59 games. A chance in front. A penalty coming. Corpus Christi ice rays. So the road runners, they just put themselves in a bad spot there. Obviously, it happens. Bad play. Um, the, the only thing I would like to have seen out of Connix there a little bit is maybe I would like to have seen a shot on goal there. Um, and, you know, you got a power play coming. Um, they, you know, they were dead on with the goalie, didn't get a shot off. Um, and, uh, you know, they got a power play coming up here that they're going to make good on anyway. But uh, I would like to have seen a puff thrown to the net there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough because there was a penalty called in the play. So who knows how much of, uh, you know, a scoring chance it actually – I mean, obviously it was a scoring chance, but, you know, maybe you just couldn't get the shot off because of the, the penalty. Um, but uh, it's a great four check, which caused a turnover and uh, ultimately a power play. Yeah, no, for sure. And let's watch this power play here, and uh, we'll, we'll play it through to, to the goal, and then you can come back here, Greg, and we'll have you talk a little bit about what, what went right and what went wrong here on the power play. No, he's going to the wing. And that- is that Mooney? Yep. Up top. Kyle Mooney. So they're going box. For wearing. Down low for Aldrich. Sausage pass That's back to Wearing. Can we pause it there, Tim? Yeah, let's talk about their, like, forcing one, right? Yeah, so um, the guy up, up on the top left, I think it was – I think it's Wearing up there, right? Um, he probably should have went more towards the boards for a better outlet back. Um, Joey DiMartino made a great play with a stick. And uh, – got the puck out of the zone, but here, right there, wearing has got to open up maybe a little more to, towards the boards and give a better outlet there and just kind of regroup, you know, you don't need to, to force that puck. Um, you know, it's, it's a short power play. It's a minute and a half power play. So a turnover and a dump down that, you know, that's 15 seconds or so off a of power play. So. Yeah. If wearing here, just simply in the road runners do it later on to perfection. If he just goes, right to the boards right here. Then it's an easy pass off the boards here and there's no chance for Joey D to have a chance at it, right? Yeah, especially being a righty over there. All right, so let's try to play here. So a little bit of a bad pass. It's a pass he goes back and gets it. No yes. harm, no foul, they get it back. Yeah, such a big ring, the amount of time that just ticks off there, you know? Yeah. No wearing, heads back up the floor. Not that the Probably scoreboard's the moving, but yeah. One skates. <laughs> Right wing side. So this is just a great pass here, Greg, right? Great play. Yeah, so. So they're in a box. They're in a box. Yeah, like Tom Mooney had the puck here and just makes a great pass over um, to uh, Aldrich down low. And we'll, we'll let it play through here. Kevin Mooney, back over for Aldrich. He shoots and scores. Great puck movement there. You couldn't look for better puck movement in a box. And it- so again, like George Brown said there, great puck movement there. Um, and we could, uh, we'll watch it here slowly here. So we got wearing with the puck, Greg, right? Yep. They're obviously in a box. Um, let's talk a little bit about the road runner's positioning here. Cause as you know, I'm a big stickler on penalty kills and, uh, and whatnot. So as a defenseman, I want you to jump in here first a little bit about what you're seeing here from two road runners here. Yeah, so, you know, I don't mind that too much. Um, I think DiMartino has to have, you know, a stick maybe in that lane down low. 
Um, and he's got to be a little further back if that top guy uh, on the kill is that aggressive. Um, so play it out here, Tim. Okay. Pass over to Mooney. So right there, Max Halverson. I think that's Max Halverson down low. He's got to read that play a little sooner, and he's got to be the guy to step up there. Um, and Joey DiMartino has to drop back down and watch that back door. He kind of got caught puck watching there um, and forgetting, forgetting about the man down low. But, you know, ultimately it was a great pass. But I think Max here has to really step up and read that play. And the killer up top has to drop down a little lower after that pass is made. And uh, Joey D has to come down a little, a little lower. See, what I see here, Greg, is what I don't like is, is this Brett Jackson up high? I, I can't tell. All right, well, let's say, let's just say whoever it is. F1, right? Forward one for the Roadrunners. This guy here. When Connix is so far back, they really can't hurt you from back here. Mm -hmm. So as this forward comes up higher, he's making it easier for Connix. Yeah. So I think he's too aggressive. And Joey's aggressive as well, and that's not a good combo. Because once they move the puck down low, it's going to be, it's, like you said earlier, it's a huge rink. Uh, maybe at, you know, rapid fire or uh, skate safe, you know, the rinks we play out here, are a little smaller, it works. But on a big rink like this, you know, so F1 here, by going high, once this pass is made, he's out of the play. Yeah. So what I would love to see happen more is if Joey was maybe in this area here, mm -hmm. this forward be about here they're going to creep in a little bit more i'd say a little higher than that i mean that's already the hash marks well they're going to creep in even yeah. if he stays where he is right now okay because they're going to come in more but as this man has the puck if this man comes towards him yeah it takes him out of the play okay once this pass is made and now he has it what needs to happen is this man needs to shoot up yeah this man needs to shoot across and he needs to slide down and they rotate because mm -hmm. what happens here now is we'll see again is once this pass is made, the man's so high, he's out of the play. Joey's trying out game where he is on the rink and they make a smart pass across and the goal is easy. It's an easy one. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you got to tip your cap to the other team and say, they just made great play. You know, yeah. it was just great mm -hmm. passing all along. So even if the road runners played that perfectly, um, because, you know, they don't have a big team, the Roadrunners. So you don't have – I know Joey uses a long stick, but he's a smaller guy. So without really long guys, positioning is even more critical because you can't get away with mistakes like you could if you have, you know, three, six, foot two guys out there. You know, they just get in the way a lot of times. So so that's the power play goal there. It's always fun uh, dissecting a power play. Um, and then after that, um, we move forward here a little bit um, on uh, – let's forward here. Run this play through first. Oh, that was beautiful passing. And now Connix, very slow start, but they're looking good as of late. It's 1-1 one, one, no matter what the scoreboard now they have says. Control and the momentum. Alex McDonald to the far side. Aldrich back in front, just misses Swanson. Stay. So, no, great. We talked about this play a couple times, so we're going to rewind it here a little bit. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll let you jump in here. Sounds good. Yeah, so Corso makes a great play on the back check there angling his man but look at him there it sticks up in the air right? Going again here a little bit yep it sticks in the air he stopped moving his feet and he kind of forgot about that guy on the on the far side yeah so we're talking about right here guy in the center um, this positioning here yes so he's probably just assuming all right this guy comes in late he's got him right so <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the high guy, right? My guy's back here, but these guys are well too far off to worry about that. Yeah, at least put your stick in, in you know, in, in the lane there um, and let them bring it back because the guys less deadly are out there. Um, that pass back. did go across. It did, yeah. So here it looks like Swanson's down low. Um, and Swanson's not in the, in the best spot, you know. Um, I think he's got to drop off a little bit, give himself a better angle and a scoring chance there. Instead of, kind of sitting in no man's land, um, looking for maybe, you know, a, a deflection from that angle, which is tough. Um, you 
know, and him receiving a, a puck, a pass off that angle is pretty tough. So he's got to open himself up a little bit more and maybe step out, you know, a foot or two. Yeah, if he goes right here, Greg. Yep. Okay. He winds up where that is. Okay. In this spot here, somewhere in this area. Yep. And he's a, and he's a lefty. That pass gets through to him. He's got a much better chance to score than now his backs to the goalie. If this puck somehow gets through and let's face it, he's in a great defensive position to block right now. And one of the things we always teach our kids is if you're the man without the puck and you can't see that he could get it to you, you have to move. Right. Yeah. Cause right now, if this is Joey D it's a great position to, to block this guy. But if he moves here, now we can't, that puck comes through and Keith Johnson's in a really bad situation to make a save there. Yeah. They're all very parallel to each other. And, and as we see here, when we watch play it through, he misses it anyway. It's a, it's a tough spot all around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'd like to see Corso moving his feet a little more on that back check Yep. and just keeping that stick down. You know, I think that's a fundamental, just kind of keeping a stick down on the ground and, and, being there in the passing zone in the passing lane um but he did stop moving his feet um and uh you know when you're when you're last man like that and your man's all the way back there he's not doing anything you know if he gets that puck so let, let them force it back all the way back to the you know defensive zone and uh let them regroup 100 percent. you know and then at, at the end of the period here um we talked about della morte earlier he makes a great individual effort here. Great. And, uh, let's, let's watch Della here. Go. Wearing to center. It's blocked. DiMartino having a little bit of trouble handling this one. Now he does. And for those wondering at home, as Della Morte shoots and it's blocked away by Robinson. Now he's going to head back towards the front of the net. Oh boy, he gets rocked. So there, you know, um, all around here, just uh, great stuff by the road runners here to end the period. Cause you want to end the period on a high, right? And you got 30 seconds, you have control of the puck. Let's get a, let's get a scoring chance at the end here, right? Yeah. Um, so Joey D makes a good head man pass up to Della. And what I like what he does here, Greg, is most times, especially younger players, they would try to dangle here, yeah. right? And he's surrounded by three guys. And instead he makes a great, and he's got that sneaky wrister, Della Morte. And he takes the shot here through the screen. Great save by Robinson. Puck goes to the corner. And to be honest, if you ask me to bet money on this battle here going into the boards, Jonathan Waring and Nick Del Morte, I would take Jonathan Waring in this battle. You know, he's that kind of guy. He's a big, strong guy. He's a defensive guy. Um, but Del Morte makes a great play here. Um, uses leverage. Shoulders him off a little bit. We'll watch it here. Out wins the battle. Now he's going hard to the net. And, uh, you know, Connix, you know, quite honestly, uh, and it was Kevin Mooney here, just takes a dumb penalty at the end here. I mean, he didn't have to crush him. He could have came in with his stick, mm -hmm. just pushed at him. He wasn't going anywhere from the side of the net from his angle. Yeah. And they would end the period with whatever. But instead, now they end the period on a power, with a power play starting for the Roadrunners. We'll watch it here again. You know, just crushes them. And that's an easy call for, uh, for Terry Ferrara right there on the goal line. Yep. Love the play by Del Morte. You know, got that got that shot through the screen. It's a great shot. Wins that battle over a strong layering in the corner. Right. And gets a scoring chance out of it and a power play. So I just thought that was a great shift by him. Yeah, no, awesome shift by Della Morte. Um, and we got a 1-1 one -one game at the end of the half. So at the end of the half, Greg, here, would you say that um, who had the edge this first period, would you say? Honestly, I, th I thought it was kind of even. Um, I thought Connix, after that power play goal, got a little more momentum going, and uh, they started playing, you know, a little smarter, um, and they, they started playing pretty good. Um, so I, I, overall, I think it was it was pretty pretty even. I thought Roganers kind of had the edge in the beginning, and then Connix, you know, stepped up their game. This is Phil Murray, coach of the Mars Blade Lions. Okay, and I guess yeah. I'm the brother of Pat Furner and Stanley Cup champion, back to back Stanley Cup finalists. Are you listening to the State Wars Hockey Podcast? Because I know I am. Let's go, Bolts, baby. And there we had it there. That's uh, Phil Maroon, brother of Pat Maroon. Um, you know, as we talked about earlier, battling right now in the Stanley Cup playoffs here. Um, 
in the finals, actually, I should say, um, getting ready, hopefully, to win another cup. Yeah. And uh, that would be awesome for uh, the Maroon family to see another cup won there. Um, not too many players, I think, uh, they've said in the history of it was six different players, maybe in the, the history of the NHL have uh, done so. And uh, let's hear from Ice-T for a minute here from Carshield. On money away, hey, I guess do your thing. But if you're like me and millions of other people who don't want to get stuck with expensive repair bills, then call Car Shield. I trust them with my car, and you should too. There we had it there from Car Shield, another one of our sponsors, Greg. Car Shield TV was a big part of the Palma Pro Division this year at the uh, Fort Wayne Allen County Memorial Coliseum. And uh, we're proud to have them as a partner of ours. But uh, yeah, Pat Maroon, get back to that, Greg. He could become, I don't know if it's the sixth or seventh player in NHL history to win back-to-back Stanley Cups with two different teams. Um, and I, again, I'm not saying he's the reason. He's not Victor Hedman. He's not Kucherov. But with this smoke, this fire, and obviously Patty Maroon brings a little sandpaper to these teams, a little something extra that, uh, you know, he could be, have a Stanley Cup ring for both hands right now. Yeah, he's a glue guy. You know, he does it all. You know, he mucks it up, can score goals. Um, good locker room guy and uh, just good, brings great presence out on the floor, out on the ice. So, uh, you know, we, we've seen him on the tile as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully he could pull one out here. It'd be nice to see him win a, a second straight. You know, two in a row would be awesome. Yeah, I think the only reason I want him to retire from ice hockey is to get back in a sniper jersey while he still has some wheels left in him. Um, but, yeah, hey, let's uh, let's go right to this power play now for the Roadrunners. Um, so they start the period, we said, on the power play. And we'll watch a second here about this uh, this power play, and we'll and we'll see what happens here um, for them. And now roller hockey takes over for the next week. Power play here for the two Roadrunners in a tie hockey. See, Greg, what happened right there? That's what we talked about earlier, right? So now the Roadrunners do this right instead of forcing a pass. Power play. You can see Corso the off the boards. Seems like a nothing play, but it's just smart. It's a smart play, yeah. One. He does that twice. In the second period, Alverson far side down low. Chris Treff along with – Yeah, again there. Alverson yeah. and Corso just playing catch. And what you do when you're doing that, Greg, how I see it, is the other team now starts getting a little antsy. Mm -hmm. And they see you playing the same side. And they start sliding over ever so slightly. So then when you change the, the, the side of the rink, make that cross pass, it opens up the game a little bit more. Do you see it the same way? Yeah, totally. And, it, you know, it makes a goalie thing, too, because, um, you know, he, he's standing there and then all of a sudden he's got to move to the, the other side of the rink, um, you know, just kind of makes makes everyone think out there, you know. And I think what people forget about, too, on the power plays, every time you go up and down or left to right, that goalie is going up and down or left and right. Yeah. And it's tiring him down. It may not seem like it, but they have to keep doing it. So eventually – the goalie may get a little lazy and not come all the way over because he knows you're not going to shoot that time and he goes back slower and it just eventually you pop one on him, right? So let's see what happens here. Downtown George Brown. Pass to the right side. Does this look familiar, Greg? It does. It does. But Connix makes a better play there. Well, it's funny how it, what happens here is the puck winds up on Jake Corso stick, who I'm a huge fan of. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of in the same spot Aldrich was in. Yeah. And he chooses not to shoot where I think he should have. He could have had the same goal as Aldrich. Yeah. But he makes a great pass across anyway. Because really, on that play, there's two, there's two options, a shot or the pass. And he makes a great pass, and it just doesn't work. Um, but I think the, uh, the Boston Bruins do this play a lot down low with Marshawn. But let's watch it here. So he's got it here now. He has Joey D. The right side. Makes this pass, opens up. Of course, he makes a great play. So now again here, let's talk about the D here for a little bit. I personally, right here, if he's one step over here, this pass never gets through, mm -hmm. right? Because he's not really, he's not covering him where he's at anyway. And again, I'd like to see one step over, but we'll see what happens here. See here, the goalie's down, right? Mm -hmm. And I know I'm guilty of this all the time. You yell at me all the time for not shooting where I'd make a force a pass here too. So Jake Corso, if he settles it a second, he probably has an easy goal here, but mm -hmm. he makes an unbelievable pass. I don't know who this is down low for the run. It might be Della Morte, um, but he just misses it. It's in his feet a little bit. Martino back over to the far wing. Got a wide open net, but they tried to center to Jake Corso. 
didn't pull the trigger, tried to pass there. And Jake Corso had the same opportunity of a shot that Aldrich had for Connix Pure. Corso didn't take the shot, he tried to pass it. Now, if the pass was, wasn't in the skates, that's a wide open net to pump on the goal. Alverson sends it through the middle and, they're and that looking, one missed. They're looking for that tip too, that back. And they wind up not scoring on this power play, I don't believe. Um, you know, what's, we're going to forward here a little bit um, to, a, to a beautiful goal by the Roadrunners. And again, speaking to Jake Corso, I love the play. And this is going to seem like a nothing play to most people, but I love the play Jake Corso makes here because Max Halverson wheels out. And I love how Max gets himself wide and breaks out. And Jake Corso doesn't think twice about it. He just gives him the puck. You know, and yeah. as you know, Greg, so many D want to carry it and hold it and hold it and hold it. He just moves it. And actually, Max luckily looked back because there was a second where he passed where Max even looked at him, right on the tape, though. Mm -hmm. And then Max goes and does a thing that very few guys can do what Max Halverson can do one-on-one, -on -one, and he does his thing here. Easy pass by Corso. Max Halverson moves down the right wing, cuts the front of that beautiful oh. goal. Max Halverson. Great, I'm gonna let you talk as an offensive player a little bit on this play by by Max. Is he recognizing somebody flat footed here? You think? Offensive? Are you mixing <laughs> up with someone? Well, we're talking time machine days here now. So 20 years ago, <laughs> when you were offensive. Um, yeah, so right there. Want to recognize a guy that you see might be a little flat out there? Yeah, just on the breakout alone, right? There, there two guys swinging. Max easily got that puck. You know, no one in his face. So much gap. You know, the rest of the, the D-men on, on Connix are behind the center line. Um, so there's so much speed coming out of the zone. And Max kind of caught him flat-footed. You know, if you're Connix and you want to play that, you know, kind of sit back trap style, you need to keep those feet moving and close the gaps a little, you know, you can't just be standing there in no man's land um, just waiting for a puck to, to hit you. So yeah, Max read that perfectly little uh, backhand forehand shot through un under the stick on that uh, lefty special side, that blocker side, and he makes a great play. And uh, you know, we've seen it time and time again over the years with Max, you know, give him that shot all day. He's, he's going to bury it. Yeah, and this defensive position of your stick here, I'd like to see this stick maybe over here a little bit more, you mm -hmm. know, on puck. Mm -hmm. um, but what I love what Max does here is most guys would just continue backhand here, right, Greg? Yep. He makes that little subtle play where he slides the puck under the stick back to his forehand and makes an unbelievable shot right here. Most yep. guys would continue backhand. He does it, and then he just, again, just a beautiful little flip shot there. And uh, Robinson had no chance on that. So great goal by Max Halverson. And again, a goal that is a, is a scorer's goal. And he's one of the few guys, I would say, in the league that could score a goal like that. Yeah, totally. Tim, I'd like to go to the 24-minute mark. Just to, I wanted to mention something a little earlier that we forgot to touch on. This was during the kill. So in the first period? Yes. Um, so this was during the kill. And, uh, you know, Parker Elliott makes great play, but then I think he kind of – watch the play unwind a little bit here. Right there. Yeah. There's a chance we gave him possibly at the end of the period. Yeah. Yeah, again, just one that's unnecessary, right? Yeah, so re rewind it quick. So Parker gets the puck. We make a great play, get him the puck, uh, grinds it out, and – a play where he could easily just have maybe dumped it down or maybe sent it back on his backhand. He should have uh, flipped it behind the net to his teammates here. Yeah, and that's probably the play I would have made. Um, make make it the easy one there, but watch him. He's got all the time and space. Right. He just flipped it back, and then his uh, you know defensive partner could have just dumped it out of the zone. Um, you know for the duration of the period and the kill, but uh, road owners get a chance out. You know after this. Yeah, let's talk about the help. So he's right here with the puck, mm -hmm. and he's looking the direction of his own goal, basically. Mm -hmm. The road runners have two here and two here. Yeah, so you're not going anywhere. Connix has two here, and really with 13 seconds, I don't know where the other Connix player is. He's probably down the rink. But... I think this was the kill. This was part of the kill. Oh, they were – okay, that's right. They were shorthanded here. So 
to your point, all he's got to do with 13 seconds left is do a little flip pass off the boards here. They control it, get it, come out, shoot it down the rink, period's over. Instead, trying to force it, and they have all the numbers over here. So it really was just, you know, a play that just probably shouldn't have happened at all. And it probably, I'm sure Nick Boyarski, you know, gave it to him coming to the bench after that here, just saying, hey, you know, let's just keep it simple. You know, um, sometimes we try to do too much. So let's watch it here. And then Roadrunners get a control of it here. It goes back. And then they get this, you know, great block again there. So they, they nothing came of it. But we talked earlier about the result isn't always what the result could be. Let's talk about why we got there. And that's another example. So good catch there, GT. Yeah. Yeah, that's an easy play for, uh, for Parker there. He, he could have just sent it back and, uh, you know, period over. That's it. But then they, you know, had some chaos and, and a scoring chance. Yeah, so here now we got a play coming up in the second half that I'm going to pick on a little, not only pick on, but just talk about a little bit of a play by arguably one of my favorite players in the entire sport and Joey DiMartino. Um, so Joey, you know, Joey's that, that player that he could do so much individually because he's so talented. He's so fast. He's so good. Um, but sometimes he may overdo it a little bit and needs to, I think, to, to learn to use others a little bit more. Um, and here's an example of he makes a great rush, but then he throws a puck blindly back the other way. And he's a D-man, so he's got to know that. I don't know if anyone's even covering for me right now. Um, I think he's looking for Bennett here, and I got to assume Bennett was maybe calling for this puck. Yeah. But Joey forced it a little bit, and let's watch the whole play, and, and we'll see what happens with it. Somehow, some way, gets away from Tommy Tui into the zone, cuts to his lefty. Martino plays it back. Nobody there. Wow, it's a 2 on 0 if he goes. But they'll just let him go with a breakaway. Tanner Tui in a lone backhand shot. Stop by Josh. Penalty coming. Will it be a penalty shot? It yes, is. It is. Yeah. So force play a little bit. And, and, and a big no-no we talk about all the time is when you get the puck deep, you don't want to throw it blindly the other way. And a lot of guys have a bad habit of that, um, especially nowadays where teams cheat a little bit back the other way now and don't give that easy pass back. But especially if you're the defenseman, you're going in, you're kind of off balance. You're just putting your team in a tough spot. And I'm sure Joey, 99 of 100 times, wouldn't have made that play. But it happened. They get a chance the other way. Credit Max Halverson. I want, I want to watch Max Halverson here on this play. And Max, another player, no mainly for his offense. Watch this play here. Oh, went a little too far. Second. So watch Max Halverson here. He's at the crease. Here's Max right here. I, I got to highlight where Max is really quick here. Get my highlight. This thing ain't coming up right now. You choose the arrow. Here we go. All right. So Max Halverson, this is him right here. Okay. This is the puck. Now I know George Brown had mentioned it could have been a two on O, or maybe this player here could have busted hard. He flipped it up to him, but he stays, which is fine. You know, he decides, hey, um, you know, we may have a breakaway here. And Max Halverson is 20 something feet behind the man with the puck and he makes a tremendous back check here, which arguably might've saved the goal here. Let's watch Max. I just want everyone to watch Max right here. Watch the go. Two on all if he goes, but they'll just let him go with a breakaway. Tanner Tui in a long backhand shot. Stop by John. What a great back check. Great back check there. And uh, you know, he didn't even get a shot on net. You know, but, you know, it was a penalty, unfortunately. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pick on our snipers team here with that. I don't know. I could probably count on one hand and cut off two of my fingers how many of our guys would have back checked like that on that play, um, <laughs> especially uh, if they were that far behind it. So great play by Max there. Um, Go back to that play, Tim. Yeah. The play by Joe? Yeah. So right here, I'd like to see Joe maybe drop that puck back to Bennett yep. and go to that net for, for a screen or, you know, a soft pick here, um, cause some chaos, you know, maybe get an ugly goal here, go to that net. Um, I think that would have been a, a great play. You know, I, I think if Bennett would have got the puck from that pass, it would have been, it would have been an awesome play, but, you know, obviously I, I think you should make the simple one. He's got a great shot. He's got a good release. Might as well drop the puck there. You know, they're 
almost towards the hash marks or the circle. So you got to get a shot on net there. And I think, you know, that's a, that's a Bennett shot right there. You know, he's, he's got a great release, good shot through a screen. Joey go to that net hard and uh, maybe get a rebound or a screen there. Yeah. And I think if Joey even just leaves it and just yeah. keeps going and maybe, you know, you gotta be careful with a pick here or an interference call, but just goes to the net then to exactly. your point, Bennett's got a great shot. He's a lefty there coming in. Um, but, and, and you have to think Joey was trying to hit him when he kept going here. Yeah. Just look at the play. He's not shooting. Obviously he's going back and you see his, his hands kind of turned over there. Like he was going back that direction, mm -hmm. but Bennett was already at the net pretty much. The play was over. So um, just bad communication, but you're right. If he would have dropped that there, I think it might've been a better result for them, but you know, that's how raw hockey is. Odd man break one way chance. The other penalty shot now coming. And now we're going to pick on Chris Treft a little bit when we watch this penalty shot here on, uh, on his play call on the goal. <laughs> so by penalty shot rules here, you know, the player, unless he's injured, I believe the player who was pulled down there or hooked is the one that's got to take the penalty shot, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, so two, he's taking it here. Um, gonna put the you know, what's that? There you go. All right. So here we go. He took a penalty to get this penalty shot. Here's a big opportunity in this game. It's Tanner Tui in forehead trot. Big save by Johnson. Well, it wasn't much of a save. I don't think well, he you know what might have got on net. Well, listen to Chuck Johnson here. there is Tanner was dead at the end of his shift. Got that puck, had to go the full length of the floor, and then he gets no time to rest for the penalty shot. Yeah. So he might have been gassed on that one. Still a great move and an excellent save, though, by Keith Johnson. All right, so we're going to pick on Trefty here a little bit because I know they pick on the players all game long here. So he calls for an excellent play and, and save there, but we're going to watch it in slow-mo here a little bit. And we'll see as he comes in here. So watch here. The puck falls off his stick here. And it never even goes on net. No. So Trefty missed that one, but it happens, you know. Um, but always fun when we get picked on Trefty a little bit. So, uh, yeah, you know. obviously, too, he, you know, he, he made a great play to get that original breakaway. And it probably took a lot out of him. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Hey, he's tired. But he's tired. But you know what? There's 20 seconds or so in between that. Grab a quick little drink of water or go to the bench for a sec you know, so they, before they sort everything out, but uh, you know, when you're in a game like this, you shouldn't be tired in, in a spot like that, where there's no one even back checking on you on a penalty shot, you know, it, it's pure adrenaline there. So and, I, I, and if you're tired, Greg, you come in and you snipe one, you don't make a move, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, no excuses, but uh, you know, Keith Johnson did a great job at, uh, you know, he stayed it, with them because he yeah. didn't make a nice little fake there. You know, he didn't get the shot off, but the fake was nice. So uh, Johnson did a great job, as he always does, just staying with the play. Yep. And then, it, you know, you know how it is. You come in on that goal, you run out of room real quick, and you're like, shit, you know. Yeah. So that was the play there. You know, here, here we got to forward a little bit here, Greg. Here's another example we talked about before about not backing up and giving yourself a good angle to score a goal. So let's watch this one here. Long range shot. That one hits off the glass. So right here, um, it's it's kind of similar to the play earlier we talked about. So this is maybe something the Roadrunners will talk about a little bit. But here, right here, and again, I, I understand how NHL teams, they like that high man on the high slot on power plays and whatnot. Maybe um, the extra guy. Right. Um, but this is a little different. So here now, if you look at, let's look at Connix for a second. And it's hard to see, but you could kind of get the idea. Every one of these guys – are looking at the puck carrier here. You can see all their heads are turned, every one of them. So this man here, if he slides back, like we talked about earlier, and he goes to this area right here, and he winds up right here, to me, he keeps coming, gives it to him. You got a great scoring chance there. Um, mm -hmm. So watch what happens here instead. Goes to the far side. They try to get it towards the front. That one's blocked. This force is one. Water nothing side. gets through. So again, he was trying to make that pass, Greg, but you know, we talk about it all the time with, with, with kids. There are eight skaters on the floor right now. One of them has the puck, seven don't. So unless you're uh, Nathan McKinnon or Connor McDavid, 
you have the puck less than you don't have it, right? Mm -hmm. So players have to do a better job of moving without the puck. And if your puck carrier can't see you clear to get you that puck, you got to move. So in that situation there, I'm assuming that looking at this play, he wants to get it to him the whole way. You can see it. He wants to get it to him. But there's not a great lane to get it to him. And it winds That's up getting blocked. And again, Connors give them credit. They're a great shot blocking team. Yeah, they got those long reaches and their big bodies. So, you know, they're they're pretty relentless on the D side. They're very good with their sticks, Connix. I mean, personally, I think sometimes it's a little much with the sticks. I think the referees give them a lot. They're definitely some of the cross players on that team. They definitely use their sticks a lot. Mm-hmm. But they're excellent at using their sticks in lanes and blocking yeah. shots and passing lanes. And they always have great goaltending. And um, whether it's Dwyer or this tournament, Robinson in goal, they're always strong in the net. And that's why they're in every game. Um and they're obviously in this one. So that was a play there, another example. Um, and uh, I'm going to forward a little bit here um, to a play involving the, the brothers I like to uh, talk about a lot, the Bennett brothers, and, and a great play here. And something I would love to see in a little bit, if this was the Sedin brothers, Greg, instead of the Bennett brothers, I think I know what would have happened on this play. And maybe I'm asking too much from these guys. But I know that you know brothers have that second sense sometimes with each other. But let's watch this play here by the Bennetts. It's Blake with the puck. I think both teams are okay with the gameplay right now. Blake up to Shane Bennett. Good switch there. Is it back in front for Blake? His oh. one-time shot. Now, there's so much great stuff in this whole play here I want to talk about. Yeah, and it's also um, – can you go back to the original breakout behind the net, Tim? Yep. So I think that's Tui in front I, I can't, or Alex McDonald. I, I can't tell. Yeah, McDonald. I think it's McDonald. Okay. Yeah, so it's McDonald here. He kind of gives gives Ben an easy breakout here. Doesn't get a stick in the lane. Just kind of lets him go. Um, watch this. Kind of just didn't even go to him. He's got to go to him a little more. Give him a little, you know, push t- towards the outside so we can't get that puck and then go back to, to his man maybe. But um, Connix really has to communicate a little better on that breakout just because I, I think uh, that was an easy, easy breakout for, for road runners there. Well, you know, defending McDonald's a little bit, though, Greg, as you know, most forwards, and I would say McDonald's in the same boat as 99.9% of every forward, they probably would have handled that the same way. Hey, I got my guy behind the net. He's going wide. They're going to pick him up now, and I've got my guy. And, and not saying that's the right way to play it. To your point, he could have forced him a little wider, made it a little more difficult for him. But I think McDonald probably did the same thing that almost every other forward in our game would do there. Yeah. So let's watch. Let's gotta, watch make a little, gotta make it a little more difficult. I agree, especially in a, uh, in a in a tight game here. Listen, so what I love here with Blake Bennett, he makes this hard play where once he makes this pass to his brother, he just goes hard. And I love that mentality of give and go. And what I would have loved to have seen from his brother Shane here, and I'm sure Blake would have loved it too, is this a little timing flip play back to him? Because if he would have flipped it into space, I do believe that uh, Blake would have had a breakaway here. Um, so watch what I'm talking about here. He makes his pass. So right here, when Shane turns, I would love for him to see his brother on his horse here and look at all that space, Greg. Yeah. He makes a little pass right there into space. I believe that, uh, Blake has a breakaway, but to Shane's credit here, he doesn't force it. He goes wide with the puck. And again, here, this is what I love about these brothers. So Shane goes wide here, holds it, hold it, hold it. Now, look at his brother, Greg. Look at Blake. Blake's behind the net now. Most guys that we know in this game, and I want to highlight where Greg is, uh, where Blake is. I'm right here. <laughs> Here's Blake right here. When that pass originally didn't come to him in the heart of the net, most guys we know, Greg, would have went to this corner, peeled back, and be out of the play. This guy keeps going, okay? He's not going to stop. He's going to go around this net and then become an option again and stop for his brother right here. And his brother makes a phenomenal pass. And it would have been one of the, one of the highlight goals of the day for me had this one in. So let's play it through here and watch what these guys do. And again, I would play these guys as a tandem all day long because they have that sense that only brothers can. So let's watch it. Let me put some volume on here. Is it back? From- and he almost didn't have to one time it, Greg, you yeah. know? He takes his time. time there. He probably just roofs it because it's such a great shot. Blake but, is what? 
I want to watch it one more time because I love it so much, this play. Here we go again in full speed. Well, Charlie Robinson made a okay. great read on it. The game play right now. Great save by Robinson. Blake up Doesn't force Bennett. it. Doesn't force it. Good Brother comes there. around. He's like, hey, bro. Is it back and forth for Blake? His oh. one-time shot goes wide. He had most of the net there. And just a great play there all around by uh, the brothers. Yeah. Well, Robinson made a great play, too. You know, had he was ready for it. Yeah. We got some great brothers um, in this sport, Greg. Think about it, right? I mean, you have one half from here, DiMartino. Uh, his brother, PJ, is obviously a great player. You got the Bennett brothers there. Um, you know, um, the brothers. brothers are also on uh, Connix, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Chavera's, you got Chavera brothers in the pro division. So How about the Mueller brothers. I don't know if this, I don't know if they both play anymore in the pro, but um, yeah, Joe doesn't play too Joe much. Joe doesn't play as much, right? Jordan's still there. Yeah, Joe played uh, juniors this okay. year, actually, with the Road Runners. But uh, yeah, there's so many, so many duos out there that are very. The Yoda brothers were one of the originals, right? Jamie and CJ in the game. Um, yeah. Two of the best that would lace them up. Yeah. So let's go here again. Another great play by Blake Bennett. And I think Blake's going to have to send me some chocolates after this uh, podcast. But let's watch the work he does here all around. And I know George Brown was probably kicking himself for not having them play on excitement while he was watching this game. But um, Maybe they left him. Yeah, I know he's a big fan as well. So let's watch this play here. Behind the net, walks up front, backhand, try it, beautiful. I got to rewind it a little bit. Sorry. All right, here we go. Fucked. Now Blake Bennett. Comes in the zone, had a speed pound to the outside, comes back in front and chips it wide of the net. Then he outworks him here. Mm -hmm. It's moving out there. Blake Bennett gets some space from behind the net, walks up front, backhand, try a beautiful save. But what, what I love what I love what Bo was doing at the end of this game is you get the impression that a good coach can sense when someone's getting going. Yeah. And you didn't hear much about the Bennett's in the first half. You know, it was all Joey, Max, whoever. But this half, you could see he was getting going. And that's when you just keep riding him, right? Every other shift. Like, I don't care how many lines I got. I'm going to keep pushing this guy out there again. He's going to get me one. And uh, that was another great shift by Ben. He could have scored two goals on that shift. Yeah, I love the play in the corner. You know, uh, Waring got got beat out in the corner there, got outworked. And I love that little play when he was cutting towards the net, when he just kind of put it underneath the goalie's stick, kind of, kind of went under his stick and got that shot. Um, just great awareness and a great play by him. I love that play. Right. You know, um, so basically uh, this here now is a turning point of the game for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's 349 left in the game. It's a 2-1 row run a lead. And let's fast forward. We'll, we'll play it through Robinson. here a little bit. They tried to go five hole. But so Robinson now there's a timeout call. Makes the stop. 346 left. Now, I don't have record of who called this timeout, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked through the stats, hoping the scorekeeper should have put it on there, who's, who called it, but it's not listed. Um, this is a key junction of the game. You know, it's a one-goal game. So to me, if Nick Boyarski, head coach of Connix, called the timeout here, it's an incredible, excellent timeout. If the Roadrunners called the timeout here, to me, it's a very questionable timeout. Um, because there's really no need for it. They just had a great shift. Um, they're winning. They're playing great. They're in their zone. Unless you want to set a set play off this face off or something. By the mo when I see of the players, how they're moving out there and where the referee was, I do think the Roadrunners called this timeout, but I'm not sure. But I'm going to assume that Connix called it because that was the right call for them. Mm -hmm. Because after this timeout, it becomes a key play. Um, so we'll fast forward here a little bit to what happens after this timeout and a 2-1 road run a lead. So, Greg, if you're the road runners here, um, what are you telling your guys on the bench with 3.43 left? Yeah, so right now it's a must-win faceoff. Got to win the draws. Get in there, help, help your uh, centerman out, win that draw back. And this is a game where you have – control you know it's 2-1 game don't force anything you know we don't need um odd man rushes you know three on ones you know if it's a two on one leave it at the two on one don't let that third guy trail leave, leave two guys back at all times but only go when it's necessary 
You know, if, if it's a great scoring chance, if it's a great opportunity, um, but you have to win the battles and control the puck because if you have Connex any life, any puck control, you know, it's just, it's not looking good. And if you're thinking Roadrunners, who you think is on the faceoff for a key faceoff right now? Uh, one of the best in the game and, and Nick Martini. Okay. So now if I'm on the Connex bench, I'm Nick Boyarski. What I'm telling my guys is, all right, guys, there's 343 left. We're playing well. It's our first game, you know, long trip from California. A lot of our guys, Arizona, but the first game sets the tone a lot for this tournament. You know, we got nothing to lose here. We're playing a good team. We're down by a goal. We haven't played our best game, but we're only down by a goal. Let's win this face off and let's start taking chances. Let's join the play. Let's jump in there. Let's put pucks to the net and we only need one. And then hopefully we get to a shootout. Maybe we could steal a point here. Right. Um, So that's kind of the message going on both ends. So, yeah, I was a little surprised not to see Nick Martini taking this face-off. No knock against Brett Jackson, who's a good face-off guy. But, you know, Nick Martini, to me, that's where he makes money. Kind of like Austin Cangelosi, another Floridian on our team. You know, that's why these guys get paid the bucks they get is, you know, you want them for these big draws right now. Um, so let's see what happens here. Let's go, team. That's a big draw after, after a timeout. I always say the first shift after a timeout, Greg, is so huge, right? Of course, yeah. If you're already winning the game, it's keeping the momentum. And if you're if you're struggling, it's let's gain the momentum after this timeout, right? Face off one. Here comes Purcell. And there goes Purcell. There goes Purcell. How the heck did he come away with the puck there? He moves in, power move, backhand, shot Johnson. What a stop, it's loose in front, Linder shoots. No way. Johnson made the save oh. on the rebound, they score. Yeah, lost face off there. Um, you know, obviously Brett Jackson's pretty good on the draws, but I, I'd have my, my go-to guy, Nick Martini, taking that draw. And uh, I just think it was a bad step by the Roadrunners as well. Um, it was a 50-50 puck, you know, up by one. Not the smartest play. Um, and uh, Connix capitalized with a strong play by Purcell, catching the defenseman flat footed, taking him to, um, I'm sorry, to the outside and cutting to the net with a rebound. Juicy rebound with the goal there by Connix. You know, we haven't had a chance to talk a lot today about Nick Purcell. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's, he's one of those guys that I think he's very underrated in the pro division, Greg. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been on a couple different teams, but. Great skater, um, and he made a play just like that um, end-to-end. You know, that was – he put the cape on right there, Greg, and said, you know what, get on my back, boys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie this game. Yeah. And it went end-to-end, which, as you know, on a 200-foot-long rink is not easy to go end-to-end um, and through everyone, basically. I mean, the Roadrunners got a little soft on the boards there, but, you know, he made a great individual effort, made a great move on Keith Johnson. Keith made a great save. And then we'll show here on the rewind here a little bit that the road run is all kind of everyone went away from the net and yeah. um, you know, another demerit for Trepti here. It was a new ones on the goal. there, not Linder in front. So I know Clay Taylor on our, on our uh, chat here came to Trepti's defense on the last one. Say it's hard to see from up top, which he's right, but we only bust Trepti's chops because he busts all our chops all the time. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was actually a new ones on the goal here. And, and, and Keith almost made, a ridiculous save here with his foot up and it's hard to see from where we're watching, but I know George Brown jumped out of his seat on that one. And we'll rewind you here to see it again, but let's watch where the road runners go and they all leave the cage here. Um, and uh, it's an unfortunate situation all around, but uh, Connix with a great play here. Let's watch a little bit of a rewind here. So new ones with a really strong move here. And I love this move as a lefty coming backhand here, Greg. Yeah. You know, you get the goalie opened up. I hate that they changed the angle here on us. Like I would love to have seen that, that same angle we were just on right now, mm-hmm. but he stops to keep his great play. And you could see one, two, three road runners and the pucks right here. And uh new ones just comes in and his eyes had to be open up to, like the size of uh of the ocean right there, seeing that puck. But watch Keith's foot here. Watch Keith. He sticks Ooh. the leg up there and almost makes a save. The rebound, they score! And they score. Oh, man. Connix. Did, 
would not be denied there. Can you guys roll that back when you get a chance? I want to. So that was just an unbelievable play all around. They they tie the game, and uh, before we go to the shootout, we'll just want to talk about one last play at the end of the period. We talked about forcing plays a little bit, Greg. So here's one with less than 40 seconds left in the play. Let's watch this force play, which actually gave the Roadrunners a breakaway at the end of the game, and Robinson had to come up big again. 20 seconds left now. Even on your screen, it says 45. There's only 15 seconds left in the regulation time here. Pass out to the point. So, yeah, you know, Mooney right in the shin guards there. You know, he's just trying to throw one on net there, but with 15 seconds left, I know the scoreboard's wrong that uh, George said. That's when you just throw one in the corner or whatnot and live to fight another day here. Um, shot it's because Augusta has oh, oh, oh. got those young legs. 10 seconds comes in here hard it's here. Christian Acosta, he shoots and Robinson. Robinson the glove wow. save, the game oh, saver. Shoot. Robinson made another great save there. Um, and that's really it for our, our recap of it. So let's just forward to the shootout. Let our fans at home at least watch the end of the game here. Let's sit let's see him see the shootout. The shootouts are always entertaining to watch. Um, and we'll see who. I know George Brown predicted a road run a win to start this. Let's see who winds up winning this game. It's 2-2 here now going into our shootout. Um, it's a three-point win for uh, a regulation win and a two-point win GT for a shootout win. And Connix is going to go first. Here. Let's play it through. Purcell in. He scores. Wow. Money. Made look, and he made it look easy. Johnson <laughs> Money man there, Purcell, earn his keep here. Kind of quiet most of the game. Two goals in the last four minutes here, Greg. Yeah, well, I mean, he didn't score that first one, but he was a big part of that one. Ah, uh, true. You're right. You got the assist, but made it happen. Points yeah. in 34 games for Quad City this year in the SPHL. What can he do here on wheels? He'll shoot. And a pat stop made by Robinson. So that's Shane Bennett getting stopped there. I'm not sure. Honestly, sure go in here again. What's that? Not sure what he saw there. I didn't. I didn't see much from from that angle. Yeah, and here's uh, Aldrich. He, does. he has a goal in the game. Another and stud for Connix here. here. Kyle Aldrich, one of our favorites. To increase their lead off the post and in. Two nothing. Post and in, Greg, almost impossible to stop. Right? I mean, it's you make yeah. that shot. And it's funny. I don't know if they talked about it on the bench, but you know, both their goals were shots. You know, yep. they were antiques around Keith. They were there were shots coming in. So two great shots. But it would be a nice one. Halverson. Halverson in. Forehand try, misses the net, and Connix pure. They come from behind. Take the three to two shootout. Yeah, not sure. Not sure if uh, Charlie, Charlie Robinson knew he was going uh, blocker side again, like, like his first goal. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe he just didn't really have much on that last shot there. So um, great play by, by uh, Charlie. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, it just goes to show you, Greg, that um, you're down two to one with 342 left, whatever it is, a timeout called, and you wind up, you know, Roadrun is pretty much, I don't want to say dominated the game, that wouldn't be a fair comment, but they controlled the game for the most part and, uh, you know, had more offensive chances, I would say, for sure. And then, you know, look at it there, end of the game, Connix with the W. So you never, you never should quit, right? I mean, I think the yeah. Dallas Cowboys proved that last week in the NFL. Yeah, and look, look at the Roadrunners, right? Um, they made it all the, way, all the way to the championship game. They got better and better throughout the tournament, cleaned up their, their stuff, and uh, Keith Johnson played outstanding as always. So, um, yeah, the Roadrunners lose that game, and, and you know, Connick was not even making the playoffs, I don't believe, and the Roadrunners are now the number two ranked team in the country going to the championship of the Palmer Pro Division. Um, and, and went on a great run, beating some good teams down the stretch. So let's talk about some players of the game, Greg. So who's name a player of the game for you on uh, Connix? Yeah, um, you know, I have a couple here, but Purcell, for sure. Um, you know, he made that great play towards the end of the game and um, buried that shoot that, that uh, shootout. So I think he was uh, my number one star for Connix. Purcell? Yep. Yeah, so uh, let's pull up uh... – picture here so there's one of our players of the game here nick purcell um goal and assist there counting the shootout goal great game from him all right on my side here i'm gonna go with uh you know from the road runners you know i i talked about him enough so i might as well mention him here 
Um, no. Number 91, Blake Bennett. Let me bring up a nice little photo of him here as well. You could tell with those those warrior gloves standing out a little bit, which we got to talk to V about that, you know, about those matching glove colors a little bit better. But uh, you know, Bennett with a with a great game. He's one of my players of the game from the Roadrunners. Um, who's another one for you, Greg, from the Roadrunners this time? Gotta go Keith Johnson. Uh played out of his mind, you know, all tournament, but uh I thought last game against Connex, I, I thought that was a very strong game from him. You know, they had a lot of chances and uh he came through. So Keith Johnson, 100%. Look at that focus there on that. That's a great shot, Greg. The puck, you know, right by his blocker there. Um, just typical Keith all night with a great save. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, and if we talk about goalies, you know, it definitely was a, a goaltending duel, I would say. Um, you know, both goalies played great, I thought, all game. You know, Robinson uh, was filling in. You know, normally Kevin Dwyer is a starting goalie for that and, um, you know, chose not to come this year. Um, so, um, you know, Robinson here, I would take a little shot of him right there. And that was, uh, it's pretty mission white pads. Um, great game from him. Yeah. He played outstanding. The runners had a lot of quality chances that game and, uh, he stood tall. So yeah. I'm Connex. I'm happy about the way he played and, uh, you know, came in and filled in for, uh, Kevin Dwyer. I know you had one more player for Connex, Greg. I know we had, uh, you know, that power play goal, um, we talked about earlier. So you had, uh, you know, Kyle Aldrich, who's always um, a big player for them. Yeah. He scored that big power play goal, opened up very, very well, got that quick shot off on the power play, and then uh, buried uh, that post and in shot on the shootout. So he's one of my my stars of the game. Yeah. And then, you know, last for me, um, you know, scored that beautiful goal during the game. And then, of course, had that amazing back check, which is what gets him the nod with me, is uh, Max Alverson. Um, you know, did on both ends of the floor, scored the goal, stopped, uh, you know, he got a penalty shot out of it, but, it, you know, stopped the breakaway basically. Uh, missed that last goal in the shootout, which I'm sure he, he stopped the, couldn't sleep all night about that because he's usually money on those, but um, everybody misses them once in a while. So Max Howison had a great game as well for me. Yeah, I agree there, Tim. He played outstanding. Love that back check effort, um, you know, during that uh, that play that before the power play started. And uh, yeah, just a lot of hard work out of him. And that shot was money. That shot was nice. Hey, this is Laura Viharanta, world champion from Team USA. Well, actually five-time world champion, if anyone is counting. You are listening to the SWH podcast. Yeah, we're here back. SWH podcast number 24. That was our first Pama Pro playback. The Tour Roadrunner is playing Connex Pure in a great round robin game. Um, the one thing people talk about all the time, Greg, about State Wars and the Palm Pro Invitational is how every game is tough. You know, every round robin game, and that's no different showing that first game there. Um, there's no easy ones to sleep on. And uh, with the three point wins, those shootout wins, you know, you get that extra point out of it helps for sure. Um, but definitely wanted to win that game in regulation. I mean, the Roadrunners went from 346 left thinking they're going to come home with three points to coming home with one big difference, but. Like we talked about, didn't really matter for them. They went away to the championship anyway. So to live and to learn. But uh, the Roadrunners and Connex Pure both played a pretty good game that game. For the first one, especially in a COVID year with a lot of teams, neither one of those teams were at Tours. There was no Narch, unfortunately, this year. So having to come out right away and playing your first game like that, got to get the cobwebs out, right? Yeah, first ones are always tough. You know, you got to get that one out of, out, out of the way, um, get the feet going, um, you know, keeping it simple. You know, I always say, you know, your first game out, first, especially your first couple shifts, um, keep it simple, guys. Get some, get some shots towards the net, and uh, you know, make it easy on yourselves. Um, and those are those are always tough ones. First ones are always tough games, especially in the beginning. But both teams played great. I thought Connix really stood tall, and um, you know, fought back, and you know, they they answered, they answered back, um, and they played smart. So, um, just another great game. Love how we added the shootouts um, to, to the pro games. You know, obviously we would love to do it for, for the youth divisions, but um, it, you know, if we did that, I think we'd be um, behind schedule a lot, you know, cause there are a lot of tie games at state wars. So I think with the amount of shootouts during a day, I think our schedule will get backed up. Right. Uh, shootouts. Yeah. It's just too much. 
It is, yeah. So, uh, no, I, I do a love pressure, the- A lot of pressure on young goalies, too, to put on them in those games, you know. Um, that's the one thing, too, you think about. Um, <laughs> no, overall, I thought it was a good game, Tim. What, what did you think? What did you get out of that game? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's funny. I was wondering how the Roadrunners would respond because in a normal year, the Roadrunners are a team that they would have been at Narch, East or West or both. Yeah. And they would have played junior and D1 and pro. And they would have been at tours and they would have played pro and junior and D1. And by the time they get to state wars, they would have played 300 games already, you know? Um, and they're young guys with the legs. And as you know, it's such a huge advantage when you're playing a lot um, with teams like the snipers or the mud cats or alkali or now Mars blade, like the older teams, they don't play as much. So, you know, it takes them a while to get going. So the road runs, I was wondering how they would adapt to not playing as much as they used to. And, you know, a couple of practices here, they're not the same as playing in tournaments and playing full games. So that first game I came out of that saying, all right, you know, they look good, but we'll see. Um, but then they proved, you know, that, Hey, it doesn't matter. Like we're the road runners. We're a great young team. And we're, we're sick of people saying, Hey, you know, these guys are going to be good down the road. We're ready now. And, um, they played phenomenal the whole tournament. And who knows, we may cover another road run a game during this playback in the future, but I thought they played well. Um, and I think some of those things we talked about, again, it's easy. You know, I'm going to say this first and foremost, we'll be able to dissect a sniper game and find as many mistakes as we just talked about. And we will, um, it's easy to be a Monday morning quarterback and that's what we're being right now and going through this stuff, but that's the only way you get better and you learn. So it's easy after the fact. So it always seems simple sitting in the stands or on the bench or even more so when you're sitting on your computer. Yeah. Um, but the game so fast, you know, we're not in their, you know, in, in their game time mentality, correct. Uh, you know, so it's tough to see sometimes. But if we, if a couple of those little plays went a little bit different, that game might've been a lot more high scoring, you know, um, but goaltendings wins games, you know, both goalies play great. Um, I think my takeaway from both teams in that first one was I think Connick's there may be a player or two away offensively. I like to see them pick up a goal scorer or two because they need someone more than what they have to just start burying pucks. Um, and there maybe they sit back a little too much defensively. I like to see them maybe get a little bit more offensive. And um, if they do that, I think they get to the next level. And, um, you know, the Roadrunners went to the finals. So there's not much you could say about them. You know, they really stepped it up. Um, you know, I, I normally talk about their size a little bit, the lack of size a little bit, or maybe defensively sometimes, but they played great. I mean, obviously they beat the snipers asses. The one game we played them pretty good. Um, they beat uh, rink rat envious in a, in a tough playoff game. They beat the mud cats and then they played a great game with the black ice. So uh, yeah. they're here to stay, I think. So they're a team to watch out for. And again, they're the number two seeded team going into the Palm Promotational next year, which is a big, a big seed to be at. Yeah. And going back to the Connex team, you know, they have a great team. I think they, you know, have a lot of good familiarity with each other. You know, they've, they've been together for a while. Um, but they are like one one goal scorer away um, from from getting to that next level to getting over that hump. Yeah. Um, I know two years ago um, they did have the kid um, Peterson from Sweden come in. You yeah. know, he he was you know supposed to be their their main goal scorer, and I know he didn't really mesh well you know his first time out. So hopefully maybe they can get him back. Um, and he he might be a great goal scorer for that team. Yeah, no, you're right. And I, and I think from talk, I remember talking to Nick Martini earlier in the summer, and I think they were going to use either Tours or, Narch or one of the other tournaments. Um, oh, Nick Boyarski, I'm sorry. Nick Boyarski, I say but Martini? Yes, you did. Oh, Nick Boyarski with Connix. Um, they were going to use Narch or Tours or both tournaments. I don't remember which one, just to test things out a little bit and maybe make some tweaks to the lineup for the Palm Pro Invitational. They never got to do that either. So that's the hard part also is you – you're not really sure what you got. Um, sometimes Narch and Tours are those warm-ups and you want to get ready for the big one, you know? Um, so, um, you know, teams didn't get to do that as much, you know? So I know when you watch the Tours games, like Black Ice looked so sloppy at times in that tournament, you know, by the time they got to State Wars, they got going and now you got a bunch of games and now they become Black Ice again. So, um, and as you know, as you get older, it gets tougher. So the Roadrunners really impressed me. Connix had a great game. I love their tenacity that game, their, their will to win. And uh, they played smart, you know, and uh, and that's what it takes. So uh, I think a great job, GT. Love seeing your insight on that, and uh, it's it a good first one, I think. Yeah, I agree. Can't wait for the next one. Uh, you know, we'll post post the next game uh, next week. We'll let everyone know what what's next, what's what's on deck. And we'll try to slide the love around a little bit. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Looking forward to it. This is Bill Murray, coach of the Mars Blade Lions. Okay. And I guess, yeah, I'm the brother of Pat Murray, Stanley Cup champion, back to back Stanley Cup finalist. Are you listening to the State Wars Hockey Podcast? Because I know I am. Let's go, Bolts, baby. All right. Thank you, Phil Maroon. And that's it for today. I'm Tim McManus. I'm here with uh, GT, Greg Thompson. And uh, have a great rest of the day, great weekend. And we'll see you guys next week on State Wars Hockey Podcast, brought to you by Glass Half Full Productions. Thanks, guys. <laughs>